Hi, this is Ryan with Iron Planet Hobbies, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Digikai's DR5088RC. This device can be used for 16 blocks and 17 channels for Railcom. The installation is very simple. Just hook your two track power wires out to the track input on this side, and it's marked K and J. And then at the top, you've got your 16 channels, and these are for J, and then K for your common, and then J on your global detector output here. So that's where the 17th channel comes from. All right, over here on the track side, as you can see, I'm going to set up two blocks for this demonstration using output one, output two, and then the common. On my setup here, I do have the track double gapped. Uh, even though you do not need to have it double gapped, you can set this up as the common. So this rail on both sides here will connect to the K. And this rail here will connect to input number one. And this rail here will go to the number two. So that's all you need as far as the physical connections go to set up this board. Now we'll jump over on the computer and see all the settings that you need to set it up to make it work right. Okay, over here on the computer, uh, what this is, is a USB isolator device and I will put a link in the description below if you would like one of these. Uh, what this does is it's uh, used for the music industry to reduce the noise in the USB line and it also then electrically isolates it from the power supply there. So uh, the reason I have that plugged in is just, well, mainly for the test here, but if you are going to ever have your track power turned on on the command station while the USB cable is plugged in, you have to have the isolator there or it will damage one or both of these units. So under normal operation, all you would need is your local net cable and your track power wires going to that device. Um, I have six of these on the layout here and I have not plugged in a USB cable to it since they were very first set up and updated to the latest software. So you do not need the USB cable during normal operations just for getting it set up on the PC, which we will start on now. Okay, this is what the screen looks like as soon as the program opens up. And up here you can see your 16 channels for block detection. This is the 17th channel for Railcom. And a lot of people want to know what this is for. This is used for any section of the track that still needs power, but you don't necessarily need block detection on. So industrial sidings, maybe a caboose track, or a track that has a maintenance away equipment parked on it. Uh, anything that you don't care about having block detected, but you still need track power, that is what you connect right here. All right, so we'll start off here with the USB tab. Right here you've got version 1.4.1. This is where you would also go to update it once you have downloaded a new firmware version. And it also shows your COM ports that you are connected on right here. This is the track input window. And these are the settings. Uh, right here you can see this is on board number one. And we are going to report the contacts upon power up and detection. We are using channel two for address detection. Everything else here is default and I am not logging any detection. And on the reporting, for use on JMRI, you will want to check this one here, uncheck that one, and these are the rest of the Railcom features, which JMRI has not yet activated. So I have these unchecked at the moment. And once those become active, we will do a future video uh, showing how to set these up. But what these are, are your dynamic containers. Uh, the data in these containers is constantly changing. And uh, so that's why you've got uh, these thresholds here on the Delta Z. You can change that to where it doesn't overload uh, local traffic with 
um, information that you don't necessarily need. And we'll come over here. This is your local net tab. So on the settings, I do not need slow motion. Um, I've got the baud rate and comparator tuning at factory. Uh, these are the defaults. And you will want to set this right here at the OPC MultiSense standard. And then Railcom Sense Direction, you will want to turn this off. And then this is the feedback monitor. So if you do have this hooked up with um, your layout and operation, you can actually see your feedback right here. And make sure you would have your USB isolator in place as well. Up here is the first set of the eight blocks. And you can see each one feedback number right here as they report what block number they are on. And you can also invert direction um, as that feature becomes available. If it's reporting direction incorrectly, you can invert it right here, just like you can with a uh, turnout in the turnout table in JMRI. And then you can also change your um, blocks or feedback based upon the number output here if you so choose. Um, however, I just left these at the default that they are. This is your global track output here. And it comes back as a value of 1001. And that is also by default. And right here, and where I clicked was this section right here. Uh, this brings up uh, the feedback section. So with the layout on, any locomotive address, up to four addresses can be uh, recorded right here. And so it will show the address of that decoder in that particular block. And so these will auto populate and depopulate as the locomotives move from block to block. And so that pretty much just sums up the uh, computer side here of this PC app. And so next we'll move over to JMRI and I will show you how to get that set up. So we'll close this out and now I've got uh, JMRI pulled up here, and we are on Panel Pro, and I'm going to assume that you have some basic understanding and workings of JMRI and Panel Pro. Um, I'm not going to be going through the full setup in this video, uh, so if you are just starting out, this is probably not the place to start because this is several steps down the road. Um, there are several YouTube videos out there on setting up Panel Pro and getting going, and you would probably want to go through those first just to get the basic understanding on how to use this program, uh, but we'll go ahead and keep moving here. So um, what I have done for this demo is I have two track blocks set up here. And first thing you want to do is right click on that. We're gonna come down and edit the segment. So I'll move that over here so you can see it. And I have named this block one. You do have to assign a name to it or else it will not work. And then we're gonna create edit the block. And so this pops up here. And what we're concerned about right now is the sensor. And this will be sensor number one because it's connected to block number one. And we can go ahead and apply that and hit OK. And as soon as I do that, you can see this has changed to uh, red. So we know this is occupied. And you can verify those by coming up to your tools, tables, and then drop down to sensors right here. And you can see these are auto populated just by having the DR5088 plugged in. And you can see right here that LS1 is active. So LS2 will be used for block number two. So we'll jump back over here and we will edit this. And first thing we will need to do is go ahead and give it a block name. So I will just assign that block number two, create a block, and then we will use sensor number two for this. And we will hit apply and OK. And we're done with that. And so what we will do now is I will run the engine from this block here to this block here. And you will see that it changes. I'm going to remove that. All right. So now you can see the detection is working just like it should. 
And now the next step is going to be to set the reporter label. So the reporter labels can be found also in tools and tables. And let's see here, reporters right here. All right. Here you can see those reporter labels and the locomotive I'm using is 7048 and just like you saw in the panel, it exited block number one and it has entered block number two. So we will need to add these to the panel so that way uh, the dispatcher or whoever's using it can see it. So first thing you'll do is come up here, we're going to click on uh, options, we're going to come down to add, we're going to add a reporter label. And this is going off my screen here. Let me drag it down. So uh, this is the reporter label window. We're going to add new label. And oops, I clicked it wrong there. So reporter name, uh, we're going to do uh, LR number two for this one. And we will add it. And there you can see 7048 enter. You can also change this by coming over to your font, font size, and we are going to increase the size here. And then of course you can change the color as well. And we will add one for block number one. So we'll come back to the add and report label again. And this time we want number one, add label. And let's move it over here. And let's go ahead and change the size of that also. And there we go. So now when we run the locomotive back to block number one, you will see the red change and you will see the reporter change um, from this will go to exited and this will enter. So there you can see now they're both red because it's crossing the, the gap. 7 and 4 8 has entered and now it has exited this block right here. So that is the basics for setting up the Digikize DR5088. Please like and subscribe for more videos and like always if you have any comments or questions please drop those below and we'll also have product links in the description below. And just a couple more things here before I go that I need to mention is in order to get the feedback here from your decoder, you need to make sure that you have Railcon turned on and also that it is recording on channel one and channel two. Um, if your decoder does not have Railcon, then you will still be able to get your block occupancy, but you will not be able to get any of the feedback here. Um, another, uh, just a word of caution, if you are using uh, MCE decoders and you have Railcom turned on, some, if not all of the MCE decoders will not work. So you, you can use decoders from Digitrax and uh, Soundtrax and uh, others that don't have Railcom. You will still get block occupancy, but you will not get the feedback here. Um, primarily, you would want to use something like the ESUs, Zemo, Lens, uh, TCS uh, says that they've used it. I have not tried it uh, with any of theirs yet. So maybe in a future video, we'll try those out. Um, and I'm using the ESUs on mine. Um, although this has not been a step-by-step -step video, uh, maybe we'll do one of those in the future uh, when JMRI implements some of these other features. And I'll just give you a glimpse here of those features. And these kind of go along with those dynamic containers we were talking about earlier on the DR5088 PC app. And right here at the bottom of this uh, table menu, you can see um, the address, where seen, when seen, the speed of the locomotive, uh, the load, temperature, fuel level, water level, location, and the routing. So there are a lot of really neat features coming uh, out on using Railcom, uh, so we will just have to be patient until JMRI gets those activated to where we can use those. And once we get that uh, fully implemented, then we will come back and do a full step-by-step -step video on getting that set up. Thanks again.